falling on different types of ground. And not too long ago at my church, I preached a message about good seeds and bad seeds. Come Amen. On, yeah. See, the problem is, is the storms are mostly caused by some of the seeds that we're sowing. Amen. Hello, I ain't going to get too many amens Amen. off of that. Amen. Because some people know that they're not sowing the good seeds. Amen. They know that they're not sowing the seeds that are supposed to be sown. So they sit back and they try and hide their amens. Right. Come on, somebody. I guarantee you if everybody say amen, nobody will know that you are the one that is involved in the bad seeds. Come on, somebody. But I guarantee you that these, I, I can tell you that the word talks about how seeds have fell on stones and how the sun had scorched them and that even though they grew up, they still withered and died. Come on, somebody. Isn't that just like the church today? You have some people that have grown up in church all of their life, but yet and still, they have withered and died not being saved. Come on. I had somebody uh, about two Easter's ago. The man was 70 years old, and he said he had been going to church for 50 years, and 50 years, nobody ever asked the man, was he saved? Come on, somebody. So he was going to church for 50 years, but not living as the church. I wish I had a witness in here. See, see, so this was causing storms in his life. Come on, somebody. And it's not necessarily that the storms may have surrounded him, but yet and still it may have surrounded those that were surrounding him. Y'all not going to hear me in here. It's important that you are careful what kind of seeds you are sowing. See, Jesus was speaking in parables to tell them you need to do the right thing. Come on, somebody. You need to be about my work. You need to be about the right thing because if you're not about the right thing, then you'll get in some kind of trouble. Hello, somebody. I come to tell you that the church is in trouble today because of the type of seeds that they are sowing. They are too busy sowing seeds of talking about somebody else in the church or sowing seeds about doing things that they're not supposed to be doing like sleeping with somebody else's man. I wish I could be transparent in here tonight. But I want you to know those who sow good seeds that fell into good ground, it grew up and it lasted. It grew up and it lasted. And then next thing you know, as he said, as he said, the Bible says, let's go to the other side. Let's go to the other side. After Jesus had talked about the seeds, he tells them, now let's go to the other side. But see, the thing is, is so many times when we are reading the word of God, we miss things that are in the word of God. Come on, somebody. Because see, everybody was focused on the disciples being afraid of the storm. But it said that other boats surrounded them. Y'all not hear me in here. What am I saying? Is while you're going through your storm, there's somebody else that may be sitting on the other side of the church. You're not hearing me here. That may be going through something too. And all hell is breaking loose on their job. Y'all not hear me. All hell is breaking loose in their credit. Y'all not going to hear me. All hell is breaking loose in their health. But yet you have the nerve to sit back and talk about them like the skeletons in your closet. for us to judge somebody else's sins. But when we have to put ourselves in front of a mirror and allow God to look at us, I always tell my church, be careful how you treat people because if God was to flip you inside out and made you see all the mess that you hold inside of you, I guarantee you would not want to hug yourself. But see, the problem again, there was both them, it was both surrounding them and that was traveling with them that was going through the same storm that they were going through and the main people that was supposed to be good and ready to go, the main people that was supposed to be focused, the main people that was supposed to have faith, come on somebody, the main people that's supposed to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord was the same ones that were scared. Y'all not going to hear me. What am I saying is that the church is starting to shake because ministry is falling from the pulpit. I wish I had a witness in here. See, it's bad when the preachers can't even get it right. The preacher's faith has fallen. So now the church can't follow behind because they are too busy worried about other things and scattered everywhere else because of the hell that so now, 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 
now you got these disciples, these fools. And I, I preached the message one time, and, and y'all excuse me, but I have to get transparent for the children. I preached the message at a youth convention, and I told them, I said, look at your neighbor and say, these nuts. <laughs> Everybody looked at me with the same look y'all got to me right now. Like, why in the world would he say that in church? I want you to understand that Jesus walked around with 12 nuts. Walked around with 12 nuts, nuts that, that, that was gangsters. Come on, somebody. Nuts that was that was doubting the same person that they were walking with. People who wanted to doubt who he was. Come on, I wish I had, I wish I had a witness in here. Y'all act like y'all all grand and mighty. Come on, somebody. I know I got some thugs in here. And I'm not only talking about the men. I know some sisters that's quick with a blade. Come on, come on, chop your ear off real quick. Amen. But I want you to understand that these crazy men are now running to him and saying, do you not care that this boat is being overtaken by war? Come on, somebody. Isn't that just like the saints? Lord, don't you see me down here? My rent ain't paid. Come on, somebody. Lord, don't you see me? My car known is due. Lord, don't, don't you see that I ain't got no food on the table? And then we really get bold. We start saying, Lord, you see that you'll supply all my needs according. You'll supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. So I need you to get up, wake yourself up, and get us out of this situation. Come on, somebody. Have I had anybody that's ever had to go to God for real and be like, look, God, I don't know what is going on. Everything's not working in my favor. All that I thought was going to go well is not going well. So I need you to get up and turn something around. Maybe y'all ain't had that prayer. But I've had to pray to God and say, look, God, I know you to be an 1159 type of God. I need, I need you to show up. Right, not, not, not tomorrow, because if I stay till tomorrow, the sheriffs will be here. Come on. Come on. If I, if I wait till tomorrow... They might repossess my car. Come on, somebody. If I wait till tomorrow, my lights might be on. Come on. Come on. If I wait till tomorrow, child protective services might come into my house. I need you to step in right now. Right now. Yes. And then he looks at us and say, oh, ye. Of little faith. Oh, oh ye of my now faith is the substance. Always tell my church that substance is understanding. Now faith is understanding. Come on, somebody. The thing's hoped for. So I want you to understand, if you don't understand, then how do you expect it to happen? Come on, all God wants you to do is just step out on faith. He don't even need you to move both feet. He just needs you to take the first step. Because he said in Jeremiah 29 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, but to give you an expected end. But how, how is it that I can depend on God? How is it that I can have strong faith when it looks like the doctors can't do nothing else? Come on, somebody. How is it that I can have strong faith when there's no food on the table? How is it that I can have strong faith when my husband is out with somebody else? How is it that I can have strong faith when my wife won't even come into the bed? Y'all not hear me in here. See, it's all right to tell somebody, yeah, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding. Listen, I've been laying it long enough. Come on, come on, I had some times when I had to tell them, look, I done almost knocked God down. I can't lean no more. Somebody. But see, it's easy for me to get caught up in my mess. 
it's easy for me to get caught up in somebody else's mess instead of my own mess. See, I want you to understand that the storm that's getting ready to happen, this is a season where God is shifting things. Come on, somebody. If you notice that when they showed it on the news that Florence was in a big circle, I wish I had a witness in here. I wish I had a witness in here. And it says that every realm goes higher and higher. Come on, somebody. Some people need to evacuate where they are. Because they have gotten comfortable living in the sin that they're in. So you need to be stirred up. See, if the church so busy sitting still, when one person get up and praise God, you look at them like child preachers. There ain't even about to be none of that today. I got too much going on in my personal life. I'm not going to shout with them today. I ain't going to say no amens. Pastor, better not look at me wrong because I got a few words, but come on. I wish I had some real saints in here. So I mean, I've been there before. Come on, somebody. When I say I don't even want nobody to sit beside me, I'm just going to stand the whole service. Oh, my God, my God. Say so. <laughs> but see, sometimes God will send somebody right in the midst of your storm when you are going through. Somebody that will speak peace in your life. Come on, somebody. Somebody that will tell you that God is real. And I've been through what you've been through. Don't worry. Because God is going to see you to the end of your situation. Amen. It may look like all oh, hell is breaking loose right now. But know that God is getting ready to open the doors. Every time something is turning. He's turning situations around. Every time the whirlwind comes around. I want you to understand that he's turning somebody's hell. Come on, somebody. Every time the whirlwind come around, he's turning somebody's ring around. You know I mean? Every time he turns something around, he's turning somebody's yes, spiritual battle. Yes, yes, I wish I had somebody that would just jump up and just turn around. Be careful when you turn around. Be careful when you turn around because you never know what you're turning into. I got to move. I got to move. All right. So the most important partnership is the hand of partnership, and I want to get this out of the way so I can go ahead and sit my tail down. But I want you to understand that that's the most important part of the ship. I found out when I Googled because this was the part of the ship that keeps the safe products. Come on, somebody. All right now. The hand of part of the ship is the part of the ship that has all of the supplies, all of everything that you need to keep the ship in motion. Come on, somebody. Everything to make sure that the ship is going. So what am I saying is that they had to go back to the supplier. Yeah. 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 Come on, don't miss that. They had to go back to the supplier. And I'm not just talking about the supplier inside of the boat, but I'm talking about the supplier outside of the boat as well. So therefore, it cannot be done if the supplier was not there. The supplies. That's it. All right. So what did he say? Peace. Be still. Peace be still. Everything came to a stop. See, that's the thing is that so many people, when things are going on in your life, they're trying to let things break loose on you. When God speaks peace, I want you to understand your boss can't do nothing. When God speaks peace, your cousins can't do nothing. When God speaks peace, your mama can't do nothing. Come on. When God speaks peace, the, the devil can't. The devil can't move. Because, see, I'm reminded of a story all the way back in the Old Testament where he had to get permission to even touch a man of God. Just in case I got some biblical scholars in here, I'm talking about Job. Come on. Come on. And what did he tell him? He said, no. He said, you can have everything that he has. The only thing that you can't have is his soul. So what am I telling you on this evening? Is I'm telling you that even though this storm is coming, it can have 